Blog Talk Radio. You are my protector and you are my provider and my deliverer. There's no other help I know. You are my protector and Stevie B's Media Production presents. What a word from the Lord radio show. I'm your host this evening, Stevie R. Butler, and this radio show is dedicated to spreading the truth of God's word, rightly dividing the word of truth. Ladies and gentlemen, we're grateful that you're tuning in to our radio broadcast this evening. This radio show is brought to you by loving and faithful members of the Church of Christ. We would ask you to take out your Bibles and study along with us. We have a very exciting show planned for your spiritual enlightenment and your edification. If you'd like to contact us while we're on the air this evening, just give me a call to the live show at 713-955-0508. If you have any questions or comments for any of my co-hosts or my guests on the radio show, just send your emails to butlersteve1009 at yahoo.com or you can give me a call to Carolina Studio at 910-491-6405. Now again, This program is brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ. And if you need any assistance in locating a congregation in your area, please feel free to contact us. Now, folks, get out your Bibles and study along with us here on What a Word from the Lord radio show. radio broadcast. Stevie B's Media Production presents What a Word from the Lord radio show. I'm your host this evening, Stevie R. Butler, and this radio show is being broadcast from the Carolina studio in the great state of North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just grateful for the privilege to bring you a program where we as Christians and members of the Churches of Christ can share our faith and preach and teach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ on a weekly basis. So before we go into our program for this evening, I would ask that you would bow with me in a word of prayer that we may thank God for this opportunity. Our most kind, gracious, loving, heavenly Father, the Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to go through the various activities of the day and placing it on our hearts that we are on this broadcast and we are prepared now to present a portion of your holy and divine word. Father, we pray that you would be with my special guest speaker, Jonathan Charlie, and my co-host, Edward Bishop, as they break unto us the bread of life. We also ask your blessing upon my special guest in the community corner, Glenn Sutton, as he serves our community as well with his various talents and gifts to uplift our neighbors. Father, we pray that you would bless them and their families that support their efforts as well. Father, we pray that you would bless our listeners this evening. We pray that they may listen well and that their they may consider their eternal stance before you and their hearts may be pricked as they will cause them to ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Father, we thank you so much for sending your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are so grateful for his precious sacrifice on Calvary's cross for without such a sacrifice, we will not even have a hope of eternal life. Father, even now we ask that you forgive us for the transgressions of our own heart. We know our flesh is weakened. We often fall short of your will. Father, we pray that you'll continue to bless us and love us and keep us all the days of our lives. And if we have been faithful unto death, Father, we pray that you would save us. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning into our broadcast this evening in the first segment. Now, my special guest that I have scheduled for the show is Jonathan Charlie. Now, Jonathan hasn't made contact with me today, so I'm not sure if he's even going to make it for the show. But if he doesn't make it for the show, I'll just have my co-host will go ahead and do the first segment of the show, Edward Bishop. And I will go ahead and do Edward's segment in the last portion of the broadcast. I'll bring a lesson to close out the show. That's just in case my special guest speaker, Jonathan Charlie, doesn't make the show this evening. And in the community corner, my special guest is Glenn Sutton. Now, Glenn has a bullying program that he does in the public schools. And there's a story that I tell behind uh, uh, this guest, Glenn Sutton, but I'll tell it when uh, he comes on the show. And he's from Fayetteville, North Carolina. So we're looking forward to having Glenn on the broadcast. He's been on the show before. So that's what we got going on. Now, my co-host, Edward Bishop, he is scheduled to do the last segment of the show. He serves with the Niagara Falls Church of Christ there in Niagara Falls, New York. He'll be making this proclamation of the gospel of Christ to close out the show. Now, that's only in case my special guest, Jonathan Charlie, does not uh, make it for the show this evening. And if I have to have Edward do the first segment, that's what we'll do. And we'll find out here after the break how we're going to do the show as far as the, what order we're going to go in. Okay? So open up your Bibles and I want to open your minds and let's have a great show after the break. The next voice you hear hopefully will be that of Jonathan Charlie, but if not, it will be my co-host, Edward Bishop from Niagara Falls, New York. All right? Enjoy the show. This may be the last time. This may be the last time. Hey! 
speaker that I had scheduled for the show, Jonathan Charlie. He hasn't made contact with me as of yet, but I have someone who's going to stand in, uh, Stanley Phillips. He's one of my sponsors from Little Rock, Arkansas. So he's going to stand in at the, maybe by around about 7 p.m. He'll be doing a lesson. Uh, I certainly appreciate him stepping in on the show at the last minute. So what I'm going to do, my co-host, Edward Bishop, he's going to go ahead and bring us a lesson entitled Cash the Check. Enjoy your listening experience. I would like to first of all take the time out to thank Brother Butler for giving me this opportunity to stand before you on this evening. More importantly, above all, I want to thank the God of Heaven for giving me the strength and the ability to be able to stand before you on this evening. For it is in Him that we live, we move, and we have our very being. We are because he is. Our amness is simply wrapped up in his isness. I want to speak a spirit show guide just for a brief moment on the subject. Cash this check. Is that all right? Cash this check. Before we can cash a check, we must first know what a check is. A check is a written, dated, and signed instrument that directs a bank to pay a specific sum of money to the bearer. When the payee presents it to a bank or other financial institution, to negotiate the funds are drawn from the payer's bank account. That is the definition of a check. 
our Lord and our Savior wrote a check. He made it possible for us to be brought at a price. His price was his blood. The Bible tells us that he purchased the church with his blood. He bought and paid for the church with his blood. Uh, By the dying on the cross of Calvary. He left the richest coats of heaven. He walked this sin-cursed earth. He stood in another man's court. He carried another man's cross. He was beaten and whipped for another man's transgression. He died for another man's sin. He was resurrected for another man's justification and sanctification. And that man that he died for was us. He died so that we would not have to. And in his dying, paid the price for us that we could never pay for ourselves. The Bible tells us that yet while we were yet in sin, God died for us. The godly for the ungodly. The just for the unjust. The righteous for the unrighteous. Cash this check. The check that God wrote is probably the most important check that one can never cash. Each check has a check number. Crisis check number is Mark sixteen fifteen through 16. Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 15 and 16. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be condemned. Notice Mark 16, 15, and 16 again. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be be saved. Oh, if you want to be saved on this evening, you have to be baptized for the remission of your sins. 
Acts, the second chapter, in verse number 38. Acts, the second chapter, in verse number 38. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or for the forgiveness of your sin. If you want to receive the forgiveness of your sin, you have to cast the check that Jesus paid. There is no other way in order that you can enter and inherit salvation other than by obeying Mark sixteen fifteen and 16 and Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38. No baptism equals no salvation. i say it again. No baptism equals no salvation. If you're not baptized, you're not saved. You cannot say the sinner's prayer and inherit salvation. You cannot pray at the mourner's bench and inherit salvation. You cannot just call upon the name of the Lord and inherit salvation. The Bible tells us in Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse number 21, Not everyone who says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. And some will say, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Or in your name have we not cast out devils? Or in your name have we not done many wonderful works? And Jesus said, I will profess unto them, Depart from me, ye workers of lawlessness. You do these things, but you don't do it according to the law of God. And if you do these things not according to the law of God, you are lawless. And he said, and I will say unto them, depart from me. I never knew you. Oh, if you want to inherit salvation, if you want to receive salvation, if you want to be called out of darkness and be called into his marvelous light, You have to cash this check. And this check includes includes baptism. Oh. The date of this check is A.D. 33. I say it again. The date of this check is AD 33. The date that the church was established. 50 days after the death the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Three days after he was buried and resurrected and was risen again with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. Three days after Whooping up on Satan for three days and taking his house keys. Taking Satan's power. Said, now I have the power. 
I have overcome. I have taken the power from you, Satan. I have taken away the sting of death. You no longer have power. And then in Acts chapter 2, verse number 38. After Peter and the rest of the apostles stood up, and proclaim the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. After telling folk that they had crucified the Messianic Master. After telling folk that they have crucified the Messiah. After telling folk that they have crucified the Savior. After telling folk that they crucified the Son of God, but not only the Son of God, but God the Son. The folk, 3,000 people, obey the very first gospel sermon in fact. When Peter and the rest of the apostles stood up and they asked, they said, Now what must we do in order to be saved? And Peter stood up and said, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And then he says, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the promise is to you and to your children and all those who are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. The Bible calls us by the gospel. Well, I'm going to get into that part in just a few minutes. But those who have obeyed, the 3,000 that obeyed the gospel of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost, the Bible tells us in Acts, the second chapter, verse number 47, that God added them to the church. The same God that added those who obeyed the gospel then adds them to the church of those who obey the gospel now. You cannot join the church. God has to add you to his church. And he gives you his spirit after you have obeyed the gospel. Acts the fifth chapter, verse number 32. The Bible tells us that we are witnesses to this. That God gives the spirit to those that obey him. Oh, cash. This check. If you are a member of any other church other than the church that was established in AD 33, I'm here to let you know with all love and all due respect on this evening that you have cashed the wrong check. The Baptist church came too late. The Mormon church came too late. The Jehovah Witness church came too late. The Church of God in Christ, Kojic, came too late. The Church of the Seventh Day Adventist came too late. The Muslim religion came too late. It was founded on the wrong date. Those churches were founded by the wrong person. Those churches were founded 
in the wrong city at the wrong time, at the wrong place, by the wrong people. Jesus said in Matthew the 16th chapter in verse number 18, Jesus said that I say that upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades or hell shall not prevail against it. The Bible tells us that Christ is the head of of the church. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 20. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 18. That in all things he may have the preeminence. That he is the head of the body. Which is the church. The Bible also tells us in Acts the fourth chapter. And I believe the verse is number 12. There is no other name given under heaven. To men. Whereby we must and can be saved. Other than by the name of Christ. So if you're wearing the name Catholic. You're wearing the wrong name. And you've cashed the wrong check. If you're wearing the name Baptist. You're wearing the wrong name. And you've cashed the wrong check. If you're wearing the name of the church of God in Christ, you've cashed the wrong check and you're wearing the wrong name. Oh. If you're wearing the name of Baptist, you've cashed the wrong check and you're wearing the wrong name cash this check if you're wearing a name other than the name Christian no suffixes and no prefixes just the name Christian if you're wearing something other than that you're cashing the wrong check Oh, the Bible tells us that they were first called Christians at Antioch. No prefixes and no suffixes. The Bible tells us that God said he will give his people a new name. And that name is Christian. C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-A which means I ain't nothing without Christ. Oh, cash. This check. The Bible tells, has, a check has the sign. This is paid to the order of. But the church, Christ said, I will pay to the order of those who obey me. Romans, the first chapter, in verse number 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes him to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For it is written, the just shall live by faith. The power of God is the gospel. That is how one is saved by the gospel. For then, herein, 
the gospel. It's the righteousness of God revealed by the gospel. God calls all those who have obeyed him out of darkness and have called them into his marvelous light. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 3, that we are not only saved by the gospel, but now we are standing in the gospel. If we keep in memory what Paul had preached unto us, the gospel of Christ. So if you want to be saved this evening, you have to obey the gospel of Christ. The gospel is God's dunamis power. It is God's dynamite power. It is God's chosen power. It is God's only power unto salvation. You can't inherit salvation without obeying the gospel of Christ. There is no other way. The amount With the blood of the spotless Lamb of God. That was the cost for us to be able to have salvation. Was the blood of Christ. Him dying and hanging on the cross of Calvary. Him having nails driven in his hands. And nails driven in his feet. And a crown of thorn placed upon his head. It was not. The nails in his hand. And the nails in his feet. That kept him on the cross. It was his love for you and for me. The blood, his blood, was the cash that purchased our salvation. That we may not only have life, but that we may have it more abundantly. In this check, as I said, it's for the forgiveness of our sins. The routing number is Acts chapter 2, verse number 37. And I close with this story. There was a man and he was dying. He stood in the court. And Satan said, this man deserves to be in hell. But Christ says, Father, I can show you reasons for why he should not be in hell. And he says, Father, he shouldn't be in hell because he obeyed the gospel of Christ. My gospel, our gospel, and my blood covers him. God stood up, banged the gospel, and said, case dismissed. And the, young, and the man went to Jesus and said, has everybody who's ever obeyed you always received the same result? And he said, those who have obeyed my gospel have always heard 
my father say. Case dismissed. If you want God to be able to stay for you what he said for that man, case dismissed, you have to cash this check. I thank you for your time and your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to get a hold of Brother Butler and he will get a hold of me. Thank you for your time and your attention. We are climbing, climbing, climbing. 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 climbing, oh, we climbing, yes, we are, oh, we climbing, We're trying to do Find this evening. Oh, yes, we are. Let me say that again, y'all. We are climbing. Yes, I am. Will you tell them what we're trying to do?
congregation in need of lending for a building or expansion project? As your partner and advocate, Diversified Financial Network will take the time to understand your unique situation and develop a financing solution that meets your specific needs. It's an exciting time for your congregation, and what you need is a company with expertise in church financing early in the process. Call us today at 1-866-513-6665. Or visit us at www.diversifiedfinancegroup.com. These are the announcements for the events and activities in the Churches of Christ. If you'd like to have your events and activities announced on this radio broadcast, please contact me at the Carolina studio at 910-491-6405. Or you can send me your emails to butlersteve1009 at yahoo.com. The Deep River Church of Christ in High Point, North Carolina, is seeking a full-time evangelist. The ideal candidate will be outreach-focused with a desire to win souls and has a king ability to appeal well to a cross-cultural audience. For a copy of the full job description, visit the homepage on the website www.deepriverchurchofchrist.org and to apply, send a resume, a cover letter, and three professional references to deeprivercoc at triad.com. One of my co-hosts, Steve Cordo, from the Gospel Light Radio Show, that airs on Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, has just written a new book, and this title of this book is God, Grace, and You, and you can order this book from the 21st Century Christian Catalog. On April the 21st and the 22nd, 2020, there will be a Servant Leadership Empowerment Conference and the Conference on Brotherhood Unity. And the conference will be hosted by Warren G. Blakely Sr. on the campus of Oklahoma Christian University. To register for this event, visit their website at unitedbrotherhood.eventright.com. On October the 15th through the 17th, 2020, There'll be a 44th annual 2020 Midwest Lectureship Conference of the Churches of Christ, and this will be hosted at the Sheraton Hotel at the Keystone Crossing in Indianapolis, Indiana, and the address is 8787 Keystone Crossing, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46240, and the regular registration is open now. For more information, please contact the 2020 Midwest Lectureship in Carroll Metro Church of Christ at P.O. Box 53650. Indianapolis, Indiana, 46253. The telephone number is 317-347-8790. And just a program reminder, Stevie B's Music Production Presents, we're airing live shows here on Blog Talk Radio. If you have any announcements or events to be aired on these broadcast, you can give me a call at the Carolina studio at 910-491-6405. On Monday, the first Monday of the month, we air the Gospel Light Radio Show. That'll be a special edition show. And the next scheduled show is on February the 3rd. And my co-host, Robert Lee Johnson, from Thomasville, Georgia, he'll be presenting a lesson on that broadcast. And then on Tuesday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show for the Word from the Lord Radio Show. And each week, we have a guest speaker. From the Brotherhood of the Church of Christ will be presenting a lesson from the Word of God. We also have a community corner that section for small business owners and entrepreneurs who have products and services for our communities. And also my co-host Edward Bishop from Niagara Falls, New York, and Mark N. Skelton from the Metro Church of Christ will be presenting lessons from the Word of God on this broadcast. And we also have on Thursday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'll be hosting a live show, the Gospel Light Radio Show. And I have nine co-hosts who will be presenting lessons from the Word of God on that broadcast. And each week I have two of my co-hosts on the air with me. I'm also taking a question from my Shout It Out platform on social media, Facebook, that I'll be posing to one of my co-hosts on the show. 
And then on Friday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, Stevie B's Acapella Gospel Music Blast Radio Show. And on this show, I'm playing some of the world's greatest acapella gospel music artists. We're also integrating the artists that we're playing on this show. We try to do that every first Friday of the month. And our next scheduled interview will be on February the 7th. We'll be interviewing Warren Blakely Jr. from Atlanta, Georgia. We're also doing the Top 20 Countdown show. And the next scheduled uh, show will be around February the 14th. I do believe that will be the second Friday of the month. And we're doing the, every quarter. We try to do the marathon show. Whatever artist that we're featuring on that show, we just play their music for the entire show. That's our marathon show. And our next scheduled marathon show will be on April the 24th, 2020. And we're featuring the group United Acapella out of Houston, Texas. You can, if you can't catch these live shows, you can always pull up these on-demand episodes wherever you're getting your favorite podcast from. Just type in Stevie B's Media Production. And if, you, and if that does not work for you, you can always go to these various uh, my various internet stations that are carrying these shows. Uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes, ACARadio.net, iWayRadio, MCCBroadcasting.com, IBCBroadcasting.com, YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel. You can also go to the Church TV Network and see their playlist, Acapella Radio. You can also go to World of Acapella and also on Deezer. And coming soon to Pandora. We're excited about that. You can also go to my website, Spreaker.com. Just type my name in the search bar, Stevie R. Butler. So you'll be able to see these shows. i like to give a shout-out to all of my sponsors who are sponsoring these radio shows. Sharon Norwood, she lives in Chicago, Illinois. And her company is called Organo. Their slogans, her slogans are health product for healthier living. And Bethesda Memorial Funeral Director Crematory Services out of DeSoto, Texas. And Stanley Phillips, he's the owner of a touch of class of pearl from Little Rock, Arkansas. And Diversified Financial Network, LLC from Dallas, Texas. And the owner is Mark and Charlotte Pearl. And my sponsor is Cheryl Mirage. She's from Charlotte, North Carolina. She's with the Compassionate Haiti Leader. She's been serving Northern Haiti for 20, 20 plus years. And they invite you to become a part of something greater than yourselves. So please visit and donate to Haiti at www.compassionatehaitileader.faith. And my sponsor, Yvonne Blazing Cracker Group from Nashville, Tennessee. Certainly appreciate all of our sponsors. The three E's of Stevie B's Media Production it is the objective of this broadcast. We want to educate, we want to edify, we want to encourage you in a study of God's Word. And that will conclude our program announcement. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. Stay tuned. When God says no, Father, 
knows what's best When I lay awake in the middle of the night With tears streaming from my eyes I remember Father knows No matter what you're going through Cause he knows Father knows And I start to feel a little better Cause he started talking about my Jesus And the garden of Gethsemane And how we pray to the Father Let this cup pass from me Then he did just like me, y'all Said he went to his best friends And his friends let him down He said, my God, my God Why have you forsaken me? Well you see, sometimes God is moving And we don't understand See, Jesus paid the cost When we were lost And it was all a part of God's master plan So when you're waiting for that answer And God says no to you Just go ahead and shout hey! And have no doubt that the Father knows more than you when God says no. No, 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 no. See, it's not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. That's why I'm trusting in your Father. So when I pray for that job, and I never get the call. They've gone on to that eternal home. And when you cried and you prayed and you cried and you feel there's nothing left, just put it in the hands of the Father and remember no matter what it is or what it looks like, God He knows. Yes, He knows. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. Now my special guest speaker, Stanley Phillips, and his subject, When God Says Move, We Move. Good evening, everyone. Uh, such an honor and a grace to be uh, able to present the Word of God this evening. Uh, I'm going to come from the book. I'm going to write, hop right into it. I'm going to come from the, the book of Acts. Uh, the chapter is 10. Uh, we know this to be the story of Cornelius. Uh, however, um, this this uh, this chapter here has a lot of uh, meat that pertains to what's going on today. We know that the world uh, is saddened by uh, the loss of those that uh, died in the plane, cross, uh, plane crash uh, there on Sunday, Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven other passengers. And oftentimes uh, we... <clears throat> as Christians and in and, and the world alike, uh, how many times have we asked, um, you know, Grandmama was a great person, Grandmama was a devout person, did much things for the community, did all this, that, and the third, and uh, still, uh, we that are of the body of Christ know assuredly that there's more to it than that. Uh, and so within this uh, Acts chapter 10, uh, we find uh, three um, points that I'm going to uh, allude to in this uh, short period of time that I've been allotted. Uh, the first being, uh, we must seek, um, we must go, and we must teach. All right. Now, let's start off with the verse, <clears throat> verse one, and it says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently uh, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa, and call for one Simon Peter, 
Simon, whose name surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited. And the soldier, devout soldier, and them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. And on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop of the, to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him. And it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God have cleansed, that call not thou common. Now let's just talk about uh, the description of Cornelius. Cornelius was a a centurion, one of the band called the Italian band. Uh, He had a lot of responsibility. He was a a great man in in the the Italian band regiment, which consisted of about 500 to 1,000 men. So he had a lot of responsibility. But still in that, he had the uh, diligence and the respect and for authority for God uh, to pray daily, uh, to give alms. Um, give alms meaning he showed mercy to people. He was a very giving person. Uh, he was a devout man, meaning he was um, uh, dutiful to his to religion. Uh, some of us as Christians aren't as dutiful as Cornelius was. However, uh, there are eight things that do not save the soul. And uh, he consisted of all eight of these things. Uh, but he was seeking diligently uh, those things. We know in Matthew 6.33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things that will be added unto you. So first and foremost, uh, on this perspective, he was seeking uh, the Lord. And then the Lord saw that he was seeking him and, and made provisions for him to link up with Peter uh, and uh, so he had a fear of God. We know that, that uh, James 2.19 says that demons fear God. So that, that, he, he did that, giving much alms to the people. There's a lot of people that are merciful and pity and do great deeds, uh, as, such as Cornelius did. He prayed always, um, and we, we know that uh, he also saw visions, and he was just in the eyes of man. So man looked upon him as a, as a great man. Uh, and having a good report of men. Uh, we look at this parallel to Kobe Bryant and, and many other people um, that, that we grew up with uh, in our neighborhoods and so forth, and celebrities and certain people that we look up, uh, that they had all this going for them. Uh, but Cornelius was different because he, he was seeking diligently. So once he uh, – now the part about Peter that was key is that Peter um, – did not understand what God's plan was for man. For we know that in the first chapter, we know that um, for he was not ashamed of the gospel. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel. Um, In chapter 1 and chapter 2, we have the gospel being preached on the first sermon that Peter preached uh, to the, um, on the day of Pentecost, where many souls were saved. That's the first time that all Nations of of individuals heard their uh, in their native tongue uh, the salvation uh, and the preached the gospel. The first gospel sermon was preached. So we have Cornelius uh, being diligent, seeking the word, uh, and he was moving. He moved when God said move towards uh, Peter and Joppa. But Peter was reluctant to move, almost similar to Jonah uh, when he was told to go to Nineveh. Um, but Peter. I saw, I fell into a trance and saw this dream, and the dream was the four corners, and the four corners resembled all nations coming together in oneness. Uh, what God had in store was that the gospel was there to save not only the Jews, the original chosen people, but the Gentiles 
God wanted also to hear the gospel. And Peter was reluctant uh, to say that, and that's why he was thinking of a of a physical nature about the animals um, being unclean. And and sometimes we we as those that are Christian in the body of Christ, we look at individuals, and we have to be careful about looking at individuals, whatever walk of life they are in, if they're homeless. Uh, they don't look like us. They don't speak like us. Uh, we cannot be uh, prejudiced in preaching and teaching the gospel. Uh, so uh, once Peter realized uh, what God had in store for him, he was to go. We have scriptures for us that, that show that we have to be uh, of an advantageous in action, that we have to go. Um, Acts 17.30 says, at the time of this ignorance, God um, uh, winked at uh, and uh, repentance, but now commands everyone to repent. So that means uh, during that time, uh, the chosen people were the chosen people, and God winked at their ignorance. However, today, since we have the gospel, the word of God, uh, we uh, have no longer have the right to say that we're ignorant. And furthermore, we as Christians have the inherent responsibility that we have to go and teach and preach the gospel. We find that in Mark 16, 15, and 16. It says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. However, he that believeth uh, not shall be damned. We also have in Matthew 28, it says, Go into all the world and teach the gospel to all every creature. Uh, and we also know as Christians in the body of Christ, sometimes we think that the responsibility is inherent upon the minister. Uh, the minister has a lot, or the preacher has a lot of responsibility to uh, visit the sick, uh, do funerals, uh, preach the gospel, teach classes. And we, as the soldiers or, or the pre royal priesthood, we have inherent responsibility according to the will of God that we have to go and preach. Uh, Romans 10, 10 says, uh, how shall they hear without a preacher? And we often use that as a crutch. But we also have scripture reference in Matthew 9:35 and it reads well Luke 10 we'll, we'll go to Luke 10 and verse 2 uh, to show us that we have an inherent responsibility to go just like the preacher is to preach the gospel and it reads in Luke chapter 2 Luke chapter 10 excuse me uh, allow me to get to the page quickly Luke chapter 10 and verse 2, it says, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Uh, we, have a, we have a great world out there, brothers and sisters, that is striving and yearning to hear the truth, the unadulterated truth, the gospel, the good news of the death and burial of resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, how he died. Uh, for the, all mankind so that they might have the right to the tree of life. And we are the ones that are responsible to get the gospel truth out to them. Uh, however, uh, there's few uh, laborers. Uh, we have, we have these, uh, this, uh, this treasure in us and these earthen vessels. We find this in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, uh, but we keep it hid. Uh, we, can, we can't keep it hid, brothers and sisters. The simple fact is that uh, our story and our transformation of how God transformed our life from a, a life of sin to a life of righteousness is basically the gospel truth because there's so many people that have walked the same walk that we have. And now with our story of the gospel truth, how God transformed us, they can be led to Christ. So inherent with preaching the gospel and teaching the gospel, we have to seek out those that are lost. Uh, as they are seeking diligently to find just as Cornelius was. Um, and it is our duty, inherent duty, that we do that. Uh, Peter resisted, uh, but we are instructed that we have to teach the death, the burial, and the resurrection. And that is found uh, all in Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10 and verse 39 through 41. If we read this, we see the five Acts and uh, of um, salvation, which is hearing the gospel, believing the gospel, repenting, confessing, and being baptized, all these Cornelius did after he was seeking, and Peter realized what God's plan was. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to 
the book of Acts, chapter 10, and we will commence at the 39th verse. And it reads, just give me one moment. Acts chapter 10, 39, it reads, And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that is which he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and and magnify God, then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. We also found uh, this was a powerful, powerful uh, statement where Gentiles were now uh, given the right to the tree of life as the Jews were the chosen. So God always wanted us to be one. Uh, he, uh, Jesus prayed for that in uh, Matthew seventeen seventeen and through 21. He prayed that we all be one. In Christ, uh, we have where Jesus uh, established the one church in Matthew 16 and 18. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then we have also that there's only one church that you can read about in the Bible. And that one church God wants us all to be uh, members of. And he is uh, he's not slack concerning his promises, brothers and sisters. We find that in Second Peter 3. 8, 9, where it says, God is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. So we have our, our instructions. When God says move, we better move. Uh, we, need to, we need to move closer to Christ. We need to find those that are seeking Christ. We need to be about our Father's business and go uh, when he says go, we can go in many ways. We can go door knocking. We can go uh, through uh, mailing out information about the church. We can um, go through the Internet. Uh, we can do all types of, but we have to do our part. And we know once the word is heard, it will not go out void. Uh, for we know that we can, we plant and God, uh, and he giveth the increase. Just like in the book of Acts chapter 2. It says, praising God and having favor with all the people, the Lord adds to the church daily such as should be saved. And the reason that that happened is because we all had, they all had fellowship and they had everything in common uh, in, the, in the first church uh, after the preached sermon on the day of Pentecost. So inherent, we have three things that we must do, brothers and sisters in Christ, as I'm about to close, uh, according to this Acts chapter 10, um, a powerful sermon. Uh, no matter how good somebody is, how how um, nice or how considerate they are, there are still inherents that they must hear the gospel. How will they hear the gospel? They will hear it by us because there are those that are seeking um, to be healed from their sin sick situation. And the only way that they can do that is by coming in contact with Jesus Christ uh, through the watery grave of baptism where he will remit their sin and they will become a new creature. Uh, we have where uh, Cornelius was seeking, and God provided a way for him to hear about his son. 
Uh, we see that God was not a respecter of persons no more. There is never, there is no more male nor female, no bond nor free, um, nor Jew nor Gentile. Uh, we all are to be one in Christ, and we see where we have to go. And then the third step, we see where we must teach, and, and we must teach them the good news about Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, so, brothers and sisters, we have to be about our brothers and fathers' uh, business, our fathers' business, when it comes to saving souls and helping souls stay saved. That can be done by living uh, a, a righteous and Christian life and letting people see the light in us, and also it can be done by uh, preaching and teaching the gospel. Uh, we have to build a rapport, a relationship of trust with those that are lost so that they will be able to uh, trust us that we are really concerned about their soul salvation, as Peter was with Cornelius and Cornelius' household as they all were baptized. So I leave you with these three, three points. Um, God is not a respecter of persons, but God has inherent told us that we must move when he says move. And that inherent is seeking out the loss and the loss seeking us uh, and seeking the truth. And the only way that they can hear the truth is by us living by example and us going out to fulfill the, the great commission as was given to the apostles in Mark 16, 15 and 16 and Matthew 28, 19 through 20. We know that it is our duty uh, because we know that the harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. Uh, we are commanded to save the lost. Um, and then we must teach uh, those that are lost. So those three things we find in this text, we find uh, seeking um, uh, humility, we find those that are, are going, and we find those that are teaching, and we also find the plan of salvation, the hearing, the believing, the repenting, confessing, being baptized. And with that, uh, as long as we, become, we stay faithful uh, unto death, uh, Revelations 2.10, we can receive a crown of life that fadeth not away, and we know that we have a prepared place, but the prepared place is for a prepared people. This is Brother Stanley Phillips signing off, uh, giving us a little words of encouragement that no matter how good we think we are, we still must hear the unadulterated truths in the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and put him on in baptism, in baptism and remove of our sins so that we can be a member of the one true church, the Church of Christ that is found in the Bible. Now, Matthew 16, 18 and Romans 16, 16. We know that we will be called Christians uh, based and predicated on Acts 11 and 26, where they were first called Christians on Antioch. I, I bid you the best, and I, I wish all uh, a good night, and I appreciate the platform for my brother Butler, and I bid you all good night. Thank you very much. Are we teaching the truth in love? Telling it like it is. Like Are we holding pure motives, showing that we care? Are we teaching the truth in love? Telling all that he had done to fulfill the good commandments. He knew every single one. Jesus said there's something that indeed he did lack. The Savior told the truth. He didn't hold the message back. He was teaching the truth in love.
an alibi The truth so very obvious Made no attempt to lie With all the foes against her How she felt so all alone Till Jesus asked the people Who would throw the furrow stone He was teaching the truth in love, telling it like, like it is, like it is, while holding pure motives and showing that he cared, he was teaching the truth. segment of the show, The Community Corner, is designed to just simply tell our listeners just what products and services are offered in our communities and how you can contact uh, these various vendors for their services. Ladies and gentlemen, you'd be surprised to know just what services that people have to offer that are sitting right there in our congregations. This is one of my favorite segments because we get to hear just what uh, some of the things that the people are doing around us to serve our communities. Now, we have had people on this show who are in financial services, legal services, authors, a college consultant for professional boxers. Uh, we've had NFL players on the show, form, farmers, people in health and wellness, models, etc. So we just wanted to make the things aware of just what services are available to them. Now, my special guest in the community corner is Glenn Sutton, and he has a bullying program in the public schools in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Glenn, how you doing, my brother? Good, good, good. I am so glad to be on your show again. I apologize uh, for being hard, but I've been sick, but God is the healer. <laughs> Amen. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, there is a story uh, behind this segment. And, Glenn, do you want to tell the story you want me to tell it? <laughs> uh, which one? Cause I, which one? About the bullying story or what? Which one? Uh, about this community corner segment. Oh, yeah. Well, um, you can tell. I mean, I tell you what, you can tell. Go ahead, you can tell it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, your voice is sounding real bad, almost bad as mine right now. But ladies and gentlemen, Glenn is the reason 
that I started this community corner segment. He's wow. the reason. Let me explain what, what I mean by that. Now, what, at the time I met Glenn, I met Glenn a few years ago here in, in Hope Mills at the YMCA. And at the time I was talking to him, and he was telling me about his bullying program. At that time, on this radio show, I didn't have a community corner segment because I wanted to uh, invite Glenn to the show so he could talk about his bullying program. But I didn't have a format uh, for the show at that time to do just that. So it was some months later, I think it was about six months later, Glenn, that I actually started this community corner segment because I never forgot about the conversation that me and you had. Yeah, yeah. I never forgot about it. And and it was because of that conversation that we have this community corner segment because I wanted to be able to have people to come on the show that was serving the community as you are doing because I wanted to get you on the show. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have Glenn Sutton. Glenn is the reason that we have this community corner segment. I always (laughs) like to tell this story. All right, now, Glenn, go ahead and tell us now what it is that you were doing with your bullying program? How did you, how did it get started? Well, it, it got started really through the, the, uh, the school system. One time we, um, the school I was at, my former school that I was uh, working at, they brought in a person and the person, I, I, I met, she did a wonderful job, but she wasn't, um, I think the kids thought she was boring, but to me, to me, she did one for a job, and so I asked the kids, you know what? I asked the kids, you know, uh, what things that what things that that she could have done better. And so what happened is, they gave me some ideas, and so my wife and I we developed a one man show, in reference to bullying. And then I was telling my wife, she said, "Honey, I think you need to tell your story." And then when I started thinking back, you know what? You know, I think all the time that I was bullied, and I put it on paper. And I even tell my I even tell my students that if you want to do something, you know, make sure you make sure you put it on paper. Once you put it on paper, it makes it more real. So I put it on paper, and, and by me having a, a theatrical background through my church, I made it into uh, like a, a one man a one man show. And by doing that, what happened was it made the show become alive, and it all it, it also helped me kind of revisit some of the hurts, pains. Disappointments when I was bullied in middle in um, in middle school. So my goal is to to educate the students as well as the staff in reference to how important that we have to all be involved in stopping bullying, uh, like in our school, because of many dreams and many aspirations are being lost. So in the and so in the one man in the one man production, we try to bring out you know some of those things. Uh, through drama and theatrical. Now tell us some of the places you've been uh, with oh, your man. program. Uh, uh, well, the, uh, I I've see y'all over Vegas. social media. <laughs> yes, listen, I've been in Las Vegas, uh, Virginia, Maryland. Uh, but you know what, Stevie, the best place that I ever did it, I mean, God allowed me to do it in many places. But I did it at the school where I was bullied at. That was all, that was the most that was the most um, uplifting for me because it was because what happened was uh, uh, as soon as I drove up, my wife said, "This is school." I said, "Yes, ma'am. This is school where Chuck really started this bullying thing." Uh, my whole my whole middle school. That's why I said it was so terrible. But then I was able to come back and help or deliver people out of that uh, depression because I'm telling you, man, it's no fun. Those those three years in that middle school, Stevie, it was it, it was just terrible, and I hated it. I really did, and uh, I was so glad I was out of it. And then, even 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 now, I was I was sort of like, oh, God, you know, why'd you allow me to go through that? But now I see, you know, God needed somebody that can who can still still have the passion, even though it's right. almost probably forty some years. But, but see, every time I God knows, every time I do that show, man, it's like I, it's like I do it for the first time, and and this is how I can tell, because every time I do it, I, you know, um, because my wife she be out she be out in the audience, and I will be looking at her, I, you know, I kind of glancing at her to see, this, this is 
see how I'm doing. And mm-hmm. she would think that, even though I did a thousand sometimes, but on her face, she'd be just a smile like, oh, my God, he's doing mm-hmm. it. And that's so encouraging because cause I really wanted I really wanted to make it, make it fresh every time. So that's, and, and, and I often want the message to be clear. So when a student or when a student leaves there, they they have some they have some some uh, the problems some problems could be solved, but but we want to educate not just the students, the parents, the principals, and teachers also. So so is the school system they're receiving your program really well? Well, well, schools are bad, you know what I'm saying? Some and churches too, and um, that's why I was so surprised that because usually mm, sometimes. Uh, sometimes the church, sometimes the church do church activities, or uh, or this is what I mean between activities. Sometimes when there's a school problem, sometimes the church don't really get into that as deep. But now that they are, the reason why because a lot of those 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 some a lot of their members are, are carrying that burden all the way to church. A lot of times, even even when I was going to church, also my mom was always say like, you know, take it to God, but she didn't know how big Chuck was, and, and my faith wasn't. You know, as a little boy, wasn't wasn't that strong. So I'm so glad that the church had uh, either uh, 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 they they welcomed me with, with open hands. Not just the church, we all we also had like uh, like civic groups call me. Uh, different, you know, even Girl Scout, Girl Scout cheerleaders, and so that's the, that's the thing that I'm so impressed with. But we're still trying to we're still trying to knock. We still try to knock on uh, knock on the doors of the principal's heart because sometimes, and and most schools are on a budget, and that's why we try to keep it so affordable. So you can't say, well, you know, we don't have the money for this. It's all it, we hear that a lot of times. That's why what we are, what we also do, we do a yard a stop bullying yard sale that can help compensate some of the the costs that will cost the, that will cost the school. So so it's no excuse for not bringing us. So is any of your um, programs that you do at the public schools, do you have video uh, on YouTube? Oh, any I of got those video can convert. Yeah, that's all. Usually that's on my Facebook page, or um, I, have, um, I have a website that they can, that they can, they can go to and, and check it out. But the greatest thing that we want to do is, like I say, I always mention principals because the principal is the one, is, is the CEO of the school. And sometimes mm-hmm. they can they can get they can get bombarded, <clears throat> excuse me, by by test scores or by sports, and it's it's like it's like everything that come everything that comes across their desk is important, and it is. But but Stephen, this always happens every time, every time when there's an issue in school with bullying, I get I get a hundred calls, man. Everybody won't call me, but they call me after the fact. It's right. always after the fact. The reason why, the reason why because the principal gonna have either 24 or 40 hours of, of trying to fix this problem. Then they call me. Then I have to clean up what could have been prevented. So that's the thing that I'm trying to challenge or trying to work against. Uh, uh, don't wait until it happens. Because, every, I mean, from TV media, every time I've noticed this, every time when something happens, it's big. Uh, if somebody kills somebody in school, I get all these calls. Come to school and, and try to do this. So, we try to stop that, you know, let's do some preventive measures so we can stop bullying once and for all. <laughs> now, how long have you been doing this program? Well, uh, now it's been, it's been 17 years. 17, 17 years. years. And 17 years. But the, uh, but the funny part about it, uh, and I'll, I'll tell everybody this here, they, they say, you know, how you get started? I said, I got started in a garage, in a cold garage, a <laughs> pen, a paper, and I wrote my story, and then uh, you know it wasn't no it wasn't no lights, it wasn't no cameras, it was just me and some paper and a dream. And and here's a, here's a, here's the great part about it: even when you write it down, it has to be believable. And when I wrote right. it down, I said, Man, you know, is it, is, it, is it believable? But then my wife, then my wife kind of encouraged me. She said, "Yeah, it's believable." Cause you know why? It's your story. And when you tell your story, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you know what I'm saying? No one can. They can't, they can't dispute that. And when I tell my story, because everybody has a story. Everybody has right. a story. But it um, depends on how you like present it or um, or deliver it. It's going to see or take effect on the hearts of the people. 
and that's what we and that's what and and, and um, Stevie has all all we try to do is to show what I went through, and maybe they'll have to go through that. Cause like I say, those three years in middle school, I wouldn't wish that on on anybody. So so that's why you know when I do that show, even even before I get on stage, I ask God to to give me those feelings back that I had in middle school. So when I go on stage, that's why I be feeling. So, so when the OSC, you know, because there's no acting. It's, it's no acting. I mean, right. you know what I'm because I remember all the name calling. I remember all the ugly, fat, you know, and, and, and words hurt too. Words yeah. hurt as, as almost as bad as, as, as the punches did. So I'm Sharper going, than um, a two-edged sword. <laughs> yes, sir, man. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt. So hey, brother! Why, I need. Hey, I need to tell my story. <laughs> <laughs> see, 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 we all, we all have it. We all have it, and so as I say, if we, if we, if we can deliver it. Uh, the, 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 the delivery. So what I did was I went to uh, the Barnes, the Barnes and Nobles. I went to Barnes and Nobles. Uh, I got a book called. Um, it was um oh it was public speaking. Public speaking for dummies. I got it, and I read the book, read from the top to bottom. And, and what it did was it gave some inside, some inside sights on how to captivate your audience. And then I would, right. I would, uh, I would listen to Les Brown, Tony Robbins. Man, I listen to, listen to, I listen to Les Brown four times a day for almost three years straight. Four times a day. I didn't miss a day. I knew his I knew his message. I knew all the punchlines. I knew everything. So when he came to uh he came to Fairville and I went to the uh, I went to he spoke there. And and when he stood up and spoke, I knew every punchline. I knew him. And I said, that's what I wanna do. I wanna I wanna do this right here. But I can't but I couldn't do it like him. And the guy let me know he, he said, Let's brown is Les Brown. Glenn Sutton is Glenn Sutton. We all we that's all different. right. And that's I said, right. Wow, that's it. We just, I, I don't have to be. I don't have to be like Les Brown. And that's, that's right. Was showing, and that's right. And so I was just so happy that I. And, and then when I met him, oh man, oh man. All right. So what happened was, I had my, I had my stop bullying jacket on. And he said, "What's this?" <clears throat> and I was telling him what it was. He said, "Oh man, this is amazing." And so right. we put this together, and I, so, and I, I was explaining to him, you know, I was, you know, I've been, a, I've been following him for years, and he said, he said, hey man, he said, yeah man, stay motivated, and always right. tell your story. I said, wow, right. good God. <laughs> and so, um, that that blessed me, man. It really hey did. brother, you're doing a great work, man. Because I don't hey. know of anybody else that's doing a program like you're doing. I know. The thing is, what we have to do, and I'm learning more now, is it's it's being like persistent, and the, and also um, being persistent in what you're doing, because there's because there's some other creative ideas that I hadn't thought about. What happened was they moved my, they closed my school down um, about a year ago, whatever. So they moved us into another school. So they put me inside uh, like an elementary school. I said, what? I've been in high school for years. Why would they put me in this, you know, in this, in this elementary school? But but the elementary school had a it had a middle school inside there. But I was more with the first and third graders. You know, that's not my cup of tea. But guess what? You know, either you do that or don't have a job. So anyway, I started so I started working there. Those I still love it. And then out of that season, something else came in that I never thought about doing. So anyway, uh, long story short, we had a, a free day, and the kids come to kids, the kids for uh, seven, to eight, seven, eight years old, you know what I'm saying? They're all playful. So really, I had nothing for them until <coughs> I found this old puppet that was that was in a corner. So I, so I picked that puppet up, and I started talking with it. And <laughs> lo and behold, the puppet became like, I mean, it became alive. All the kids came up, and it was talking say to the, the puppet. The, you said the puppet came alive. <laughs> I, I was talking, right? And the kids, it had, I'm telling you, what it did, it helped.
held their attention. I said, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. This this can't happen. This can't be doing. So I'm doing, doing it, doing, doing it. So the next day, the kids see me hauling, Mr. Sutton, wear a flashlight. I, well, I have what I call flashlight. They wear a flashlight. And they all wanted to come see flashlights. But by all means, uh, Mr. Steve, I, Mr. Steve, I, because I don't do no, um, I don't do no public I, I, I don't do none of that. I was talking about, I was using my own, I was using my own voice. But the kids, mm-hmm. their picture was on that puppet. They didn't care about me. And so for the last uh, two months, Steve, I've been on, I've been doing YouTube, uh, some, some, some puppet training. Mm-hmm. And man, it's another area that God has allowed me that I didn't see. It's a, it took a life on its, it took a life on its own. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna incorporate that into my stop bullying program because it has something is going on, man. Because it's, it's, um, it's a powerful tool because the kids know it's safe, but somehow for that little twenty or thirty minutes, they, they breathe that this puppet is real. And I tell them, I say, y'all, listen to me. This puppet is not real. I'm Glenn Sutton. He do not talk. I do. But as soon as I put that hand in his back, guess what? Glenn Sutton, he's no longer. Last fight is the man. So uh, so, so I'm excited about that and, and to try to get better in with that. But we're, gonna, we're all going to incorporate um, a puppetry, if I'm saying it right, into, uh, into our stop bully program. But not only that, um, we're going to incorporate to, to, to different issues that we have in that community that's going to be that's going to be told to a public. Well, brother, I tell you, you're on fire. Hey man, I'm excited. I'm telling you, man, I been, I'm telling you something. It's something about being around kids, man. What it does, it gives you fresh ideas, and even even if you're not good at it, even if you're not really good at it at this point. By you doing it, it's something. Cause I, cause man, my school now, man, everybody want to do puppetry. Man, so I know, so I know this is just another, another avenue that God has allowed me to do. That it seems simple. That seems, uh, it seems like it's crazy, but that's just another avenue. So I'm excited about it. Hey, brother, thank you for sharing your story yeah. with us here on the Community Corner. I always appreciate you coming on the show. So I look forward to thank having you, so you back much. soon. So just keep us hey, abreast man. of what you do. What's your next scheduled performance? Where are you gonna go? Oh, um, it's okay, February. Um, well, actually, I'll be, um, or, well, um, well, in February the fourth, no, February fourteenth, I'm doing a. Um, my wife and I we're producing a husband and wife retreat, uh, page play, uh, in Florida, uh, and in, 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 in Florida, uh, uh, this February the fourteenth. After that, we're going to do our Stop Bullying show uh, in Maryland on the 25th of February. So we shoot so, so we, hey, man, we busy, man. We, we just busy. And we want, we want the God, we want the, the prayers of, of the saints to, to keep us grounded, that our message be clear, that every avenue or every, or every talent or even gifts that I don't know I have that we can share among God's people. Well, that's exactly what we'll be praying for, brother. I certainly appreciate your efforts, man, and I certainly appreciate what you're doing for our public schools. It's, it's definitely a good work. Like I said, I've never heard anybody doing a bullying program like you're doing. So, so I certainly appreciate you coming on the show and sharing your story with us here in the Thank community so corner. Much. What you doing, man? I keep on doing that. And like uh, my man Zig Ziglar said, he always said, "I see you at the top." Oh, I love when he says that. <laughs> All right, my brother. Thank you for. Uh, hey, what's the, your contact information if somebody want to reach out to you? Yes, yes. Uh, they can call my man, uh, management at nine one zero five five one four seven three nine, or they can look me up on Google. It could be Glenn Sutton. That's G L E N N Sutton S U T T O N. Put stop bullying. They can find me there. But those are uh, the best way to find me. And uh, hey, man, we we, we having fun. Hey, certainly appreciate your efforts, man. Thank you for sharing it on the Community Corner. I think so.
You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. I'd like to take this time and extend the Lord's invitation. If you're not a child of God and one cannot be a child of God until you are a Christian, we need to hear this message more and more in the year 2020. Until you have been born again, as the Bible teaches, then you are lost outside of Christ. It's not enough to be religious. You must obey the commands of the Lord. In order for a man to be saved, you must take heed and answer the gospel call. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 14, you must hear the gospel. John chapter 6 and verse 45, Romans chapter 10, verse 14 and 17. And the facts of the gospel are the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 3. You must believe the same. Hebrews eleven six 6 and James chapter 2 and verse 24. You must repent. Luke chapter 13, verses 3 and 5. Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. You must confess your faith in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33. You must be baptized in water for the remission or the forgiveness of your sins. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Acts 10 and verse 48, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. And if you are a Christian, you've not been faithful in your service to God, you need to decide again by repentance and prayer. Acts chapter 8 and verse 22. We want to encourage you now to visit the churches of Christ in your local area. Amen. And I'll see you on the other side of the break. I know. Father, we 
You are listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for spending a little time with us this evening in the study of God's Word. I want to thank my special guest speaker, Stanley Phillips. He came through for me. We had a, a last-minute cancellation, and Stanley was willing to come on the broadcast and present a lesson from the Word of God. And we certainly appreciate his efforts on the show. I also want to thank my special guest in the community corner, Glenn Sutton, and my co-host, Edward Bishop, for his fine lesson on the broadcast as well. I certainly appreciate everyone who participated on the show this evening. What a blessing it is on a Tuesday evening to be able to hear the Word of God proclaimed. This is my prayer, ladies and gentlemen, that these lessons this evening have been beneficial to your spiritual lives and that your relationship with the Lord has been strengthened because you're not only tuning into this radio broadcast, but you've given yourself over to a study of God's Word. So until we meet again, I pray God's continual blessings upon your lives and that He may bless you real Real good. You've been listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. And on behalf of my co-host, Edward Bishop and Mark and Skelton, we bid you all a good night and thank you for tuning in to this radio show. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler. Good night, everybody. God bless you. My life, my life, my life. Find my way Lord, I know you hear my cry And I know you will never forsake me Since I came up out that water, the devil's been tempting me I know the Bible says in James to resist him and he will flee Lord, I'm so far away, I feel I'm out of your reach Please open up my eyes so that I can see Lord, I can't make it on my own I need you, Jesus Please, God, be home Here's my life Please make it right Lord, I offer up my life Yeah I give my life Over to you, Jesus Yeah my life to you, Lord. So many times I've been struggling, struggling, need strength where I'm weak and weak. This life is too hard for me. Guess I better start seeking. Without you, Lord, I can't make it. It's pain that I feel I can't take it. I'm on my knees, yeah, asking to live me. Not that you move this mountain, but give me the strength I need to climb higher and higher to my provider. Lord, I tried it by myself, but in the end, I need your help. Here is my life, just make it right, Lord, again. I 
I give it over to you, Jesus. My life, my life, I give it over to you, Jesus. I give it over to you, Lord. I give it over to you, Jesus. My life, my life, I give it over to you, Episode 150. Oh, 